Good morning and welcome to Central Presbyterian Church's online worship service for this Sunday, December 13th, 2020. I'm Real A Reader Zach Cosner. I invite you to download the bulletin for today's service, which can be found at the link uh, in the description on Facebook and on YouTube or on the on our website, www.centralprespb.com. If you click the publications link, um, you'll find a list of dates. If you scroll and find today's date, if you click that link, you'll find the bulletin for today's service. Um, once you find the bulletin uh, for today's service, if you go to the last page and look at the announcements uh, for to uh, today, we'll go and go over those now. Um, first up, and this is in the bulletin, um, my camera broke as I set up this recording uh, uh, for this morning. Um, so I apologize for the uh, little bit more graininess of my uh, picture today. Hopefully we'll get that fixed for next week. Um, but the a uh, couple announcements is that we'll be taking up the Christmas Joy offering virtually this year. Uh, you can give online at www.pcusa.org slash Christmas Joy, or you can text the word joy to 56512 uh, to make a donation over your phone. Uh, we'll uh, have more information about the Christmas Joy offering in a future bulletin insert. Uh, again, the session of CPC has decided to stick with uh, virtual services for the foreseeable future. Um, if you follow us on social media, uh, username Central Prez PB, uh, you'll catch any announcements for any special services or uh, any time uh, we make a decision to uh, reopen, we'll, we'll make those announcements on that webpage um, or on those social media pages, I should say. Um, also, <clears throat> we want to take a minute to thank everyone who was uh, turned in their pledge cards. Um, I'm starting work on getting the budget uh, prepared for the session, and uh, hopefully we'll have some more information about that soon. Uh, finally, archives of our online services can be found on Facebook and on YouTube. Links to each are on our website, www.centralprespb.com. Uh, let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship the Lord. Rejoice in the coming of God the Savior, for there is good news on the way. Good news for the down, downtrodden and weary. Good news, peace is coming. Good news for the brokenhearted. Good news, joy is coming. Good news for those captive and in prison. Good news, freedom is coming. Good news for the heart of heart. Good news is on the way. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Join me in the prayer of confession printed in your bulletin in unison and then silently. God of our past, present, and future, you are coming in power to bring all nations under your rule. We confess that we have not expected your kingdom, for we live casual lives, ignoring your promise to judgment. We accept lies as truth, exploit neighbors, abuse the earth, and refuse your justice and peace. In your mercy, forgive us. Grant us wisdom to welcome your way and to seek things that will endure when Christ comes to judge the world. And now silently, Amen. The good news in Christ is that when we face ourselves and God with the awareness of our need, we are given grace to grow, encouraged to continue the journey. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Now we're going to go ahead and turn it over to uh, Rose Von Tunglin for this week's children's sermon. Good morning, everyone. Before we start today's children's sermon, I would like to make it, uh, everyone aware that Dominique will be having some surgery, minor surgery this week on his leg, and to please keep him in your prayer. So now, let us continue now with the time for children. Listen to the word of the Lord. 
Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among the women. We live on the brink every day. We stand on the threshold between this world and the next one. We live and move between the ordinary and divine, between the mundane and the mystery. Too often we forget to look up and see the angels in our living room. We forget that the love we give and live is a sign of eternity, God with us. We forget that company is coming. Luke tells us that God's favor came to a girl, an ordinary girl. It might have been you or your daughter. It might have been the girl down the street or your grandchild. But the messenger of God came and greeted her and said, The Lord is with you. What a gift and a promise. Emmanuel, God is with us. Today as we light these candles with peace in our hearts, for the promise of proximity, the nearness of God. Even when we forget to lean into that present, God is as close as our own breath. This, in a confused and confusing world, is a peace that passes all understanding. It is the peace that knows company is coming. Amen. Thanks, Rose, for that great sermon. Now we're going to go ahead and turn it over to Reverend Tim Reeves for this week's sermon, Topsy Turvy Grace. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Our first reading this morning comes from the 61st chapter of the prophet Isaiah, beginning with verse 1 and proceeding through verse 4 then picking up at verse 8 and proceeding through verse 11. Let us listen for the word of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them re their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoot, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. 
Our second lesson this morning comes from the first chapter of Luke, beginning with verse 46 and proceeding through verse 55. Again, let us listen for the word of the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Open now our hearts and minds, O God, by the power and presence of God, of your Holy Spirit, so that as your word is read and proclaimed this day, we may hear with joy what it is you would have us hear, that hearing we might believe and that believing we might live lives of richer and fuller service, glorifying you here on earth as you are glorified in heaven. Amen. Joy is a key aspect of the texts that we read this morning, but the joy comes as a surprise. Given the circumstances in which they stood, neither Isaiah nor Mary on the surface seemed to have much to celebrate. Isaiah is speaking as one who has just returned from exile in Babylon and is looking upon the ruins of a once flourishing Jerusalem. Mary is told that she will give birth to the Messiah, but bear in mind that she does not have our benefit of hindsight. So her situation as a poor, unwed mother in Roman-occupied Palestine does not exactly seem like the context for rejoicing either. And yet both the prophet and this young woman, woman choose exaltation. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, cries Isaiah. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Those, according to Luke, were some of the first words that Jesus uttered in his first sermon in a synagogue. Mary says, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. Both Isaiah and Mary and Jesus in his life would celebrate the reversals that God brings whenever God intervenes. Our Lord turns the world upside down and inside out but our Lord doesn't do so simply to shake things up, for it is in turning our worlds upside down and inside out that God restores creation to the way that God intended it to be 
before Adam and Eve. There are probably times when we can and do hear these words as good news. After all, I doubt that any of us would consider ourselves to be wealthy or powerful. But wealth and power are relative terms. Wealthy and powerful compared to whom? To the President of the United States? No. To Bill Gates? No. To our next door neighbor? Probably not. But most first world Christians are people of comfortable means. We live in homes that are palatial by the standards of some of the poorest nations here on earth. We drive comfortable, even luxurious cars in comparison to their modes of transportation. We seldom, if ever, miss a meal, and if we do so, it is more likely because we are too busy rather than because our cupboards are bare. And so we also need to hear the possibility that we ourselves are the ones in need of being brought down from our comfortable places. Conrad Hires reminds us, measured by the worldly criteria of importance and success, the entire Bible is a patchwork collection of anecdotes, genealogies, and histories of a motley crew of people who were nobodies in the ancient world. So much is this the case that the Apostle Paul, using words of the same order as Isaiah and Mary, can exclaim, Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to reduce to nothing things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. And here, in fact, is the basic theme of this, what Conrad Hires calls salvation comedy. For who, after all, are the people that march in the biblical parade? Certainly not, except on the periphery, those who were the center of attention in the ancient world. This is a parade of children and shepherds, gypsies and slaves, of refugees and the maimed, the blind, and the halt of nobodies and the prophets of nobodies. The chosen of God are clearly not chosen on the basis of having the most to offer, but rather on the basis of having nothing to offer but themselves. And the reward of this chosenness is often that of being the clown, the scapegoat, the butt of the joke, the fool for Christ's sake. The whole hierarchy of human values and the ladders of human greatness and self-importance are inverted or collapsed. All normal expectations and the clever stratagems of the prudent are baffled. Servants appear in the stead of their masters. Riffraff are admitted to the royal banquet table. The nobodies stand up and are counted. Peasants are crowned king for a day, and the meek inherit the earth. In the world that God establishes, Beggars are more at home than the wealthy, sinners more than the righteous, children more than parents, and clowns and fools more than priests and scribes. Which tells me that what all this means is that our striving for success and to be respected in the world is in vain, because none of that, none of that gets us one step 
closer to God. And in fact, it may move us farther and farther away from God. I'm reminded of the words of a modern carol written by John Bell, in which he says, I sought him dressed in finest clothes, where money talks and status grows, but power and wealth he never chose. It seemed he lived in poverty. I sought him in the safest place, remote from crime or cheap disgrace, but safety never knew his face. It seemed he lived in jeopardy. I sought him where the spotlights glare, where crowds collect and critics stare, but no one knew his presence there. It seemed he lived in obscurity. Then in the streets we heard the word which seemed for all the world absurd, that those who could no gifts afford were entertaining Christ the Lord. And so, distinct from all we'd planned, among the poorest of the land, we did what few might understand. We touched God in a baby's hand. That is the nature of the topsy-turvy grace of God. And though this may turn our worlds upside down and inside out, this topsy-turvy grace is meant to set things back to the way that God intends. But I'll admit that does not mean that we won't or don't resist. Flannery O'Connor once wrote to a friend, all human nature vigorously resists grace because grace changes us and the change is painful. So the challenge comes in whether we can embrace being part of God's topsy-turvy grace so that we may know true joy, or whether we will just sit and sulk and complain about how God is treating us unfairly. Can we find joy and contentment in the kind of self-emptying that our Lord calls us to, or are we trapped in our own self-centered and selfish interests? Can we laugh at ourselves when God shows us just how foolish our worldly pursuits are, or are we more prone to take ourselves far too seriously? Can we revel in God's topsy-turvy grace? Or does our need for order and control stifle our ability to see where God is truly found? To God be all the honor, glory, and praise forever. Amen. I would ask now at this time that you would please join me and confirm what it is we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed that can be found in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now let us return to God our thanksgiving through our tithes and our offerings, which again this week will be taken virtually. Uh, head to our website, www.centralprespb.com. Click on the Donate Now link and uh, you can process your tithe that way. If you would prefer, you can also mail your tithe in to the church. Uh, use our address, 6300 Trinity Drive, Pine Bluff, Arkansas, 71603. It is right in our greatest joy to give you thanks, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, thanks eternal God for all the blessings you bestowed upon us. But we are most grateful for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, and for your abiding and sustaining Holy Spirit. 
For our Lord reconciled us to you and to one another, opening the door to eternal life. Your Holy Spirit continues to confront us, convict us, correct us, and equip us to enter the world and share the good news of your redeeming grace. And so, O oh God, we offer up our time, our talents, our treasures, and indeed our very selves for you to use as you see fit. Until that most glorious day, when the name of Jesus, every knee in heaven and on earth and under the earth shall bend, and every tongue shall confess him, Lord, to your honor and glory. Amen. <clears throat> At this time, let us share our joys, joys and concerns, if there are any. Um, I know that there are several that were mentioned in our Facebook uh, chat. Um, first up, we're going to go ahead and mention Brad Von Tenglen, uh, who has gotten uh, his infection of his, I believe his abdomen has come back. And uh, so they're going to have to, um, I know the last time that that happened, it was pretty bad. He ended up in the hospital. So we need to keep Brad in our prayers. Uh, Dominic Munn is going to be having surgery this week uh, to remove several plates from his leg. They're not expecting any complications, uh, but they would appreciate any prayers uh, for Dominic uh, that you could spare. Um, we want to continue to keep Al Druitt, uh, the brother-in-law of Pat Druitt, in our prayers, uh, dealing with his cancer diagnosis. Uh, speaking of cancer, Dwayne Simpson, uh, Denise Mosley's father, has gotten a cancer diagnosis, um, and she has asked for prayers for him. Um, speaking of the Mosley family, um, George's cousin, Diana Coates, is currently in ICU uh, with, um, with an illness, uh, which isn't COVID, but um, I'm not quite aware of what it is, but she is in ICU, so please uh, keep uh, Miss Coates in your prayers. <clears throat> Haley Chandler, uh, daughter of Amanda Chandler, who used to worship with us, um, and, and of course Haley, uh, um, Haley has a uh, tumor that has been found inside of her sinus cavity. Um, it is not cancerous, uh, thank goodness, um, but um, they are trying to decide on a course of action on how to remove it. It will be um, rather invasive from what I've been told. Uh, so we need to keep Haley in our prayers. Um, we also need to keep the friends and family of Rebecca Kearney uh, in our prayers. Um, Rebecca was a friend of, um, was a friend of a friend of ours, uh, Jennifer Place. Um, Ms. Kearney uh, passed away this week and left behind several small children, I believe four. Um, and so her friends and family uh, need um, all the prayers that they can uh, receive. Um, and then um, lastly, we're going to mention uh, Dr. Carlos Arango who is a friend of Brady, Vic's friend, uh, Denise. Um, Dr. Arango recently lost two of his friends, uh, two other fellow doctors to COVID. And uh, currently uh, Dr. Arango's cousin, Ian Parker, um, is in the ICU on a ventilator with COVID. And so um, word has been passed to keep uh, Dr. Arango and his cousin, uh, Mr. Parker, in our prayers, um, dealing with those COVID diagnoses. diagnoses. And also, uh, finally, uh, we were also made aware that Allison Cromwell, who's uh, many of you know who uh, Allison had worshiped with us before she uh, uh, went off to college, I believe, um, daughter of Kate Cromwell has been diagnosed with COVID as well um, up in New York. Uh, so we need to keep uh, Allison in our prayers as well. Let's, uh, we also need to keep um, all of the medical professionals, all of the uh, first responders, um, all of those who deal with the public in our prayers um, as we deal with this COVID pandemic. Uh, we also pray for a rapid distribution of the uh, vaccine that was approved this week. And uh, we pray that it is uh, as successful as it has been in the trials uh, we also continue to pray for our country uh, to be reconciled to God's will and the same for our world. Uh, let us pray. Holy and gracious Father, we give you thanks that the Lord Jesus Christ is in fact the same today as he was yesterday and will be for all of our tomorrows. Uh, we please uh, keep uh, Brad Von Tunglen, Dominic Munn, 
Dwayne Simpson, Diana Coates, Allison Cromwell, Al Druitt, Haley Chandler, Ian Parker, Dr. Carlos Arango, and those who uh, we might not have mentioned here today, but those whose needs you know uh, in, in your care. Uh, we ask that all of these people's uh, medical professionals um, have the wisdom and the uh, fortitude to be able to handle and, and cure these illnesses with your help and with your healing and your blessings. Uh, we ask that you uh, be with all of those medical professionals. I know we say this every week, but um, as Dr. Arango uh, made clear, it is, it is very draining and, and very hard on the medical community uh, during this pandemic. And we pray that, that you heal those and you, and you prevent the spread of this disease, Lord. Uh, we continue to ask for protection over all of our medical professionals and our law enforcement officers and our first responders. We also ask for protection over those who are dealing with the public, our retail professionals and, and uh, those who have to deal with any uh, possible exposure to COVID-19. Uh, we also pray that you uh, be with us and you reconcile our world and our country to your will that we... Uh, discern what you want us to do and that we have the courage to do what you uh, what your will is in this world give us hope as we strive to be faithful disciples of jesus christ who taught us to pray together saying our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now go out into the world in peace to love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power and the presence of God's Holy Spirit, taking today's message with you. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen.